E aí, galera, em sua última passagem pelo Brasil, nós do Hit Up High tivemos a oportunidade de entrevistar o baterista do Sabaton e marido da Flor, Hannes Van Dahl. Confere aí! Hey, hello, man. How you doing, man? Uh, uh, like, uh, you've been playing with Sabaton for four years now? Three years? Yeah, Can barely remember. 13, yeah, 13, yeah. yeah. Late 13. Seems like it has been an incredible journey. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, can you tell us uh, how, how all this began, how it felt for you to fit as a newcomer in the band, how, how it was the process? Well, to begin with, how we got to know each other was basically on a US tour I did with a band called Evergrey from Sweden. Mm -hmm. So I was playing in <clears throat> prior to Sabaton, and Sabaton were supporting us on a US tour. And we got, I got to know the guys. That was the old band members of Sabaton, obviously. Yep. But um, so I got to know them there. We spent a lot of time together. A few years later, we met on 70,000 tons of metal. And um, it came to a point where they needed a drummer. And I was basically available. So since I already knew them, they're good guys. They do things for the right reason. It was kind of a smooth transition into the world of Sabaton. And like you say, it's been three or four years. I can't even remember. It's it's gone like that, you know. <laughs> yeah. Super fast. Okay. Time time flies, yeah, exactly. and it actually does. <laughs> Thanks. Uh, how how are you connected to this whole uh, worldwide history? And and when it comes to war, how do these songs touch you? Well, before I joined, I was never a history buff at all. So I was never really interested in it. I always found it very important to know your history. Yep. But um, hands down, you know, I didn't, I didn't know much. And I, since I joined the band, and there's several history buffs and people who are genuinely interested in history from all over the world, you kind of jump in right to that as well. So th this, you know, up until today, I've learned so much by just hanging out with the guys, playing the songs. And you know, it's not like you would you want to know the song you're playing, what it's, it's, what it's about. It can be very um, embarrassing if you don't. <laughs> so you kind of have to, you know, get to know the songs a bit and see what's, what, what they are about. And so, um, hey, you know, I'm still learning a lot of new stuff every day. And I, and I love learning. That's, I've always loved that. So I think it's great. These songs are stories you would, you know, it makes Hollywood look pale, you know, and these are real stories. You know, you know, Cobras from Antes. It's a crazy story, and it, it's for real. And I found that very interesting and very strange that more people does, doesn't know about it. Uh, this is your second time in Brazil? No, it's my third. Third time? Third or fourth. Oh, no. really? Yeah. Uh, you came here with Evergrade before. Yeah. That's yeah. great. What, what memories from the other tours, the previous tours, do you still keep from here? And, and what do you like most about our country so far? Well, the coffee. <laughs> um, I, I was just talking to a friend of mine from Curitiba, right? And we've been kept in contact since the first time I was here. And I just told him, like, coming to, especially, you know, Curitiba, since I have a lot of friends there. But coming to Brazil is like almost like coming home. For me, it is because the first time I remember I came here and I, I brought this little, um, you know, this keychain, you know, for your bag with a Brazilian flag on it, and I put it there. And every time I saw it, I got this good feeling inside. So I've always had such a good time here. People are genuinely super friendly, and the shows kicks fucking ass. Yeah, we do. Uh, what, what's the hardest song to play with Sabaton? And which one is your favorite, and why? The hard, like te technical wise, so. Speaking, yes. You know, the hardest part, I think, of being a drummer in this band, because the songs per se aren't that difficult. It's pretty straightforward stuff. But in a set, in a Sabaton set, headline set, you will have the whole spread of songs. You will have the slow stuff, you will have the fast stuff, you will have the technical stuff, even if there's no extremes on one end. So I think that's the, the biggest challenge that I didn't really expect when I joined the band to kind of change, like, okay, now it's a fast song and then it's all of a sudden super slow because it's usually one or another. So to pick one particular song, yeah, I don't know. It's a good question. Well, I won't pick a, a particular song, but what I w would like to say is that since we change set list almost every counter we go to, 
since we have songs about different countries and history, I think that's the biggest challenge. Because you go to Serbia and then you got to play Last Dying Breath. We come to Brazil and we got to play Smoking Snakes. We go to Poland, we got to play Uprising, Czech Republic, Far From the Fame, and so on. So the set list will always change. So you got to stay on your toes. And you don't have time to rehearse, you know, all the time. So you got to do it on the road and find a way to remember the... That must be really hard, actually. Sometimes, when there's little time, because you want the song to sound as good as possible, of course. And that will actually be my answer for the second question as well. Because the song, like we play Smoking Snakes now in Brazil, that will be the best song tonight. Because the house will be lit up. <laughs> yes. No, we all love the song. We all love that. Uh, it's a good so song. Thank you so much for the, for the homage and everything. Well, um, but you know you are pleased about Flo Jensen. Uh, how was it to have her join you guys <coughs> to, to record the choir vocals? And is there any chance we can have Flo singing a song with Sabu too, as a feat? Yeah, um, I mean, f for us, it was, we, I asked her personally, like, if she wanted to join, because we had, some, she was home and we had some time off. And, um, of course, it's a great way to spend time together in, a, in the environment where we usually work, you know. And to get such a professional musician in, to just elaborate with another musician on that level where she is, was absolutely fantastic. And she came with a lot of ideas. So we, she was a part of the choir that's been on a few albums. And she came with a lot of input, so it's, for me it was a great experience to be able to work together like that. Um, in a live environment, I don't know. We'll see if she had time. <laughs> yeah. uh, last time Sabaton was here was September the 7th in, in Sao Paulo. Uh, that, was the, our, that is our Independence Day. That's right, uh, yeah. Was that a coincidence or did you play it on purpose? Like you, you actually tried to manage to be this way? I don't know, actually. Have no, idea. no, I remember that it was the National or Independence Day. Yeah. But uh, no. Well, okay. Uh, do, do you and the men members, do you have any, uh, any ritual of, or procedure of warming up before the, the gigs or before going on stage? Well, I broke my arm a few years ago. So my left arm is really much slower than the, than the right one. So it takes much longer for me to warm up with my left arm. So I need an hour. And it's nothing fancy or spectacular I do. I just basically take a pair of drumsticks and slowly but surely get the arms and blood flowing. And other than that, it's just mostly bullshit in the dressing room. Talk a lot, listen to good music, you know, have fun, basically. Nice, yeah. nice. Well, uh, has any government or country ever invited you to play at some events or recognized um, everything you, you've done towards the lyrics at, and... Uh, as like all the lyrics of our historical facts and stuff, ha have you ever been invited by some country to something? Yeah, well, I know the the band got an honorary membership of Poland by the the major, uh, and I can't remember the city, but they they got that. That was before m me and the the other new guys came in. But if, to be, we have never been invited. I think to just do a specific show, you know, from an invitation from, from a government. But we had a lot of people coming out to our shows that were government or... But what's cool about that is that usually, even if they're in the government or on high positions in different, you know, work-related stuff, they are usually fans, first and foremost, which is the coolest. Because you can have always have high, you know, top-level people come out to your show, fine, but... It's cool when they're fans and nice people. So we had a lot of very interesting people coming to our shows. We had the uh, Minister of Finance from Bulgaria wow. came out to a show. That's here. Awesome. Huge fan, a super nice guy. So, and a lot of veterans. We get a lot of veterans. We get one of the guys that uh, survived from the, the expedition, Cobra Sfumantes. Oh, really? In uh, the Fortaleza, I think. Fortaleza? Nice. Last time. He came out, he's 92. He came out with his, uh, I think it was his son that was also translating for him. So that was a special moment, of course. Oh, it must have been, yeah. Now just so we can finish, like I have two totally different questions apart from Sabaton. Like, are you a player? Like if so, like video games, what, what do you like to play and what do you like to watch? I used to play a lot of video games when I was younger, but now I don't, I don't have the time for it anymore, you know? 
Well, you, actually, on the US tour now, we played. See, see, I can't even remember the game. What was it called? On the bus. Oh, man. I can't remember. There was some game where you were supposed to find a treasure on the PS4. Oh, I don't know. A treasure, like a pirate treasure. Uncharted. Uncharted 4. It's amazing. And that's, you know, and for me, that's like the first game I played since, you know, Sega, no, but, <laughs> you know, to PlayStation 3, maybe. All right. It's been years anyway, so my first reaction was, because I know that Para, bass player, and, the, and the, uh, the guitar player, both actually, play a lot of video games. So I kept on saying, like, the graphics are insane, you know, I'm so baffled about it. They're like, yeah, it's been like this for the last five years. All right, I need to catch up. <laughs> maybe someday in the future. And, and how about watching? What do you like to watch? Well, I like to watch series. I'm a good binge, binger, if that's a word. I just finished uh, Narcos, nice. about Pablo Francisco. And yeah, man, I, I can plow it through easily. It's a perfect way to kill time and traveling and, and you know, airports and airplanes and stuff like that. Right. Usually docu doc, um, documentaries or something that is based on facts, at least. And I need to throw in a comedy every once in a while because you kind of get depressed after a while watching <laughs> horrible stuff. All the time. Uh, last one. You looked fancy wearing Flora's outfit. Thank you. <laughs> do, you do you do that? That change all the time? Yeah. <laughs> when we're home, you know, then we change sometimes. No. It's, it came, became like a tradition when we had a... Because we were on tour together. Oh, yeah. Both the first time and the second time. And you usually prank the other bands at the last show. And the first time, you know, I wasn't 100% sober. Oh my God. <laughs> Liquor might have been involved, <laughs> if we can say. But hey, it's fun. It was great fun. It looks so fucking retarded. So unbelievable. And then next year again. So we'll see what happens next time we're on tour together. That's very nice. Uh, could you please leave a message for our fans? Yeah, absolutely. Thank you for coming out to our shows. Thank you for listening. It's an honor to be here again. And we can't wait to get this show on the road.